This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Four point three billion people live across this vast continent called Asia, and we are telling their stories. On this edition, survival behind bars, impoverished and isolated, many of Japan's elderly turn to crime repeatedly just to be in jail. ここで患者さんの生きづらさがあるんだろうと思います。このまま行けばあのひどい状況になるとあの誘導しています。刑務所があ本当にあの老人ホーム化すると。And dancing Alzheimer's away. A popular dance in Indonesia is set to help prevent dementia, giving hope to families of those suffering from the disease. With my mom, as one of the person who already has dementia. For me, as a daughter, there is a, I think, three times larger uh, risk of getting dementia than other people. So that's my concern. I'm Salkina Aluwalia, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. Graying populations are posing enormous challenges to many countries in Asia. In Japan, where almost three out of 10 people are aged 65 and above, the welfare system is unable to provide adequate support to the elderly. The high cost of living and social isolation have forced many senior citizens in Japan to choose a life of crime and repeated imprisonment just to survive. Steve Lunt had rare access to a prison facility in Kyoto, where hundreds of elderly inmates are serving sentences for crimes they committed so they could escape life outside. This is Kyoto Prison, home to more than a thousand inmates convicted of various crimes from shoplifting to murder. But this has to be more than just a jail. As some 200 prisoners are elderly, it's also like a nursing home. One of them is a 74-year-old inmate we'll call Kazuki. Kazuki has spent more than 20 years of his life in prison. So how old were you when you first came to prison? After being released for the first time, Kazuki found life outside even more difficult. So he committed one crime after another, landing in prison, being released, then getting locked up again. He's now serving his 12th sentence. Kazuki is not the only senior citizen in Japan who prefers life behind bars, with its free accommodation, food and health care. <laughs> あの、いろいろですね、この中は。あの、ま、右、それからま、あの、酒飲んで食べて、あの、お金払うんと捕まったりとか。ま、あの、結局出ても行くとこない、え、持ち帰りがないと。ま、それでつい、ま、右の方に
So many of them turned to crime, aiming to end up in jail, sacrificing freedom in exchange for survival. In 2015, police arrested more old people than teenagers. あの、生きづらさがあるんだろうと思います。このまま行けば、あの、ひどい状況になると、あの、有料しています。え、刑務所が、あ、本当にあの、老人ホーム化するというようなことはあってはならないことですし、あるいは刑務所が、そのその、
、えー、何か問題があった時に家族が支えるというですね、えー、そういう機能がなかなか取れなくなってきているとあのやはり今の,あの社会保障社会福祉政策があのあの高齢者の生活の現実の問題を解決するにはですね、えー、十分な施策になっていないということをまあ通説に感じています。えー、こういうですね家族とか地域とかそれから生活基盤が脆弱であるというこういう問題があの日本では非常に深刻でですね。They need attention because we have the people you cannot survive completely isolated alienated. The most difficult thing to be ignored. You know, it's like a no existence, you non exist or something. That's why they want to return to prison. You know, in the prison, they never be ignored. Long forgotten in the community, many of Japan's elderly people die alone, with their corpses remaining unnoticed for weeks. Across the country, every year, tens of thousands suffer such lonely deaths. Suicides among the elderly are also soaring. In 2014, around 10,000 pensioners took their own lives. In 2015, 71-year-old Haruo Hayashizaki often complained he couldn't survive on his pension. He told neighbors, even though I paid into it for so long, the amount I'm getting is horrible. I can't live on this. In a final act of desperation, he committed suicide by setting fire to himself on a crowded bullet train. The smoke also killed another passenger. Back in Kyoto, Kazuki will soon be released. But after nearly four years in prison without a single visit from anyone, he doesn't feel positive about his future. Many experts believe Japan's criminal justice system should focus more on rehabilitation. Most of the inmates, elder inmates, handicapped inmates, had some problems. That's why they committed the crime, poverty, social isolation, alienation. We have to solve the problems. Just punish is not enough. They just are you know, put into the prisons without any proper care. In that case, they had to commit another crime again. And sometimes they commit the crime because they want to return to the prison. It's a vicious cycle. So we have to change it. The criminal justice system should pay more attention to the problems of the inmates and offenders have. have. 福祉を含むところの本人の構成、改善構成、えー、あるいは社会復帰っていう大きな目的のためにことを裁判官も検察官もそして弁護士もすべてが、えー、考えもよりあの今以上に考えていただけるとありがたいなと私は思います。Many analysts predict that unless this country's poorest seniors are given better support, it's likely more of them will resort to crime and spend their twilight years in prison. For Assignment Asia, I'm Steve Lunt in Japan. Japan's government have begun taking steps to tackle recidivism among the elderly. There are now financial incentives to companies that hire inmates following their release from prison. Officials have also called for stronger measures to support the rehabilitation of former convicts. Next on Assignment Asia, a dance that experts say can help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Are we ready? China, a nation with the largest population on Earth, assuming a greater role economically and politically on the world stage. Understanding China is critical for all, though difficult for some. Behind the scenes of China's transformation, I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. Join me to get closer to China.
Some 47 million people all over the world suffer from Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, a disease that affects the elderly. Without a cure for the illness, experts have been looking for ways to prevent it. Here in Indonesia, a popular dance was recently found to have the capacity to stimulate the brain and reduce a person's chances of having dementia. I met the people who are pinning their hopes on a dance called Pocho Pocho, including a woman whose mother has Alzheimer's and is at risk of having it herself. Leli Milawati will never forget the day her mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, a disease with no cure. It was almost six years ago, but the suffering began two decades before the diagnosis. Suhartini was a hard-working woman back in her day, adventurous and outgoing. That changed when she suddenly turned into an introvert, shutting everyone out, including those closest to her. At some period, she didn't want to socialize anymore. She just stays at home. At that time, that's a natural thing. But as soon as we know about the symptoms of Alzheimer's, I think we have to do something about that. Suhartini's diagnosis changed her entire family's life. The third of four daughters, Leli spends most of her days caring for her mother, who is now at the last stage of the disease. Leli's heart breaks, seeing her mother's condition worsen by the day. Uh, even she doesn't know what, what it is that she needs. She doesn't know when it is time to go to the bathroom. She doesn't know uh, uh, what time that she has to, or maybe she doesn't even know if she's hungry or thirsty. Leli says it's emotionally challenging. Today, all she has are memories of her mother's charisma and zest for life. I think when we have someone that we love, loved one, who is diagnosed with a, uh, any kind of diseases, especially if the diseases was mentioned that there's no cure yet about this disease, the possibility, the reaction is, it's like the world ends for a, a second or something like that. But uh, we have to move on, so we have to find something that we can uh, try to be able to at least make the best of what we have. The best is what Yaya Suharia aims to provide for his wife of nearly 60 years. She used to call him Mr. President, signifying the importance of his role in the family. Now those words are all a distant memory. Still, Yaya stays positive and remains the strength his family desperately needs. Bahkan menjadi dorongan kepada saya untuk bisa me apa namanya bisa merawat atau mengurus istri saya yang telah memberikan anak lima orang anak pada saya dan juga sebelas cucu bahkan satu buyut sehingga itu yang apa membahagiakan saya bahwa berkat ke apa namanya berkat ke baikan atau berkat uh, usaha daripada istri saya waktu mengurus saya dan mengurus anak-anak maka sekarang mungkin giliran saya untuk merawat istri saya dari penyakit yang diderinya yaitu dideritanya yaitu Alzheimer <tuh> mungkin sekarang giliran saya untuk merawat istri saya Dan Tuhan telah memberikan saya usia sekarang ini 87 tahun, barangkali maksudnya agar saya bisa merawat istri saya. 
A breakthrough in research happened early in 2015, one that would significantly transform his family's life. It began with a popular Indonesian dance called Pocho Pocho, now believed to help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. The dance, which originated in Indonesia's north, is rooted in a deep sense of community and togetherness. The music used for the dance is an upbeat rhythm laced with folk beats. Dr. Ria Maria is the neurologist behind the research. Through Pocho Pocho, her team found a way to detect early symptoms of cognitive impairments. The study was conducted on 40 elderly diabetes patients aged 45 to 59. Kebenaran saya melakukan penelitian untuk penyandang diabetes mellitus tipe 2 di mana penyandang DM ini dia proses aging-nya terjadi lebih awal dibanding dengan orang-orang yang tidak mengalami diabetes mellitus. Nah, karena proses aging lebih awal, di situ kemungkinan terjadi mild cognitive impairment, hendaya kognitif ringan. Nah, kemudian saya memilih penyandang DM yang sudah mengalami hendaya kognitif ringan untuk menjadi responden. Diberikan intervensi poco-poco, karena apabila mereka tidak diberikan intervensi pada mild cognitive impairment ini dalam 4-5 tahun akan menjadi demensia. Dr. Ria let the patients dance Pocho Pocho twice a day for 30 minutes in a span of three months. Her findings were astounding. Setelah penelitian tiga bulan, pre dan post, pre dan post eksperimental ini di hipokampus, hipokampus itu adalah tempat masuknya informasi pertama, memori adanya di hipokampus, hipokampus, parietal lobus, dan prefrontal cortex, neuron-neuron di situ menjadi semakin aktif dan semakin banyak gitu jadi ternyata selama ini banyak itu neuron-neuron kita yang tidur saja tidak diaktifasi tidak dirangsang ternyata dengan latihan yang teratur bisa diaktifkan kembali Dr. Ria crafted her own version of Pocho Pocho which she has proved can slow down the aging process her moves are different from the dance widely performed in celebrations across the country. Ismiani was one of the first respondents to join Dr. Ria's focus group. In 2010, she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, a disease that can cause complications in old age, including a high risk of contracting Alzheimer's. Perasaan saya pertama, yang pasti sehat. Kedua, sebelumnya nggak kita nggak bisa pucu-pucu, sekarang pinter pucu-pucu. Terus untuk untuk apa ya, misalnya pemikiran bagi pemikiran ada acara-acara apa biar biasanya dokter kan, bu, ayo ini ini ini. Dulu suka mikir apa yang harus saya kerjain sekarang nggak langsung masuk ke otak saya. Data from Alzheimer's Disease International show that Southeast Asians spent 4 billion US dollars in 2010 on Alzheimer's treatment including medicine and facilities. But Dr. Ria's findings are already spreading across Indonesia. Fitri has been promoting the benefits of Dr. Ria's dance moves. It started out as a small gathering but soon grew into an important movement called Pocho Pocho Ceria or Joyful Pocho Pocho. Tertariklah uh, dengan Pocho Pocho-nya Dr. Ria yang kebetulan Dr. Ria Pocho Pocho-nya belum belum di sosialisasikan secara luas ke seluruh masyarakat Indonesia apalagi dunia. Fitri has brought Pocho Pocho Ceria to the regional stage in Malaysia and Brunei. Eventually, she hopes to promote it to a wider audience. Poco-poco ceria itu sebenarnya untuk segala usia, lebih baik dimulai sejak muda. Jadi kita akan terbiasa hidup sehat, jadi ke depannya apabila kita menjadi lanjut usia, akan hidup dengan sehat juga, gitu intinya. Terus terang, saya pribadi merasa lebih senang, Terus juga ini memang harus dilakukan bersama-sama, direkomendasikannya. Tapi kalau tidak bisa, ya sendiri di rumah tentunya jadi lebih happy karena musiknya, begitu kita dengar musiknya aja udah ingin bergoyang gitu. 
The moves performed at Pocho Pocho Cheria are known for their complexity. While dancing, participants use their hippocampus to time the music accordingly and make quick decisions stimulating the brain. Each movement has its own benefit. It's all about rhythm, but also about understanding that connection between the body and the mind. It may look easy, but it's very challenging. The average person takes about a month or two to master these simple movements, and any time before that, they will most likely forget. The dance class is an important part of Lely's weekly routine. She joined the group in October 2015. It was an opportunity that came at the right time. I think I'm getting healthier, but maybe not because of just the physical routine, but also maybe from my mind, because uh, when we gather with people, we don't think about problems, we don't think about stresses. And I think that's uh, the key point also in uh, trying to reduce the dementia, trying to be socializing with people. Aside from promoting Pocho Pocho, Lely dedicates her time to Alzheimer's Indonesia, a non-profit organization aiming to improve the lives of people with Alzheimer's, as well as to raise awareness of the disease. She joined the organization three years ago, after her mother's diagnosis. Now she's an advocate, helping others detect early symptoms. For me, as a risk reduction specialist, uh, I try to tell them how to avoid it, okay, how to avoid to get the dementia. Alzheimer Indonesia already made a, a booklet about the 10 symptoms the, of the Alzheimer. The symptoms include memory loss, difficulties in making decisions and mood swings. In Indonesia, those are often underestimated as common signs of aging. The organization has partnered with Indonesia's health ministry to educate the public on Alzheimer's, providing Pocho Pocho videos to health centers. The number of diagnosed Alzheimer's cases in Indonesia is expected to reach 20 million in the near future. Lely does not want to become part of that statistic. With my mom as one of the person who already has dementia, for me as a daughter, there is a, I think, three times larger uh, risk of getting dementia than other people. So that's my concern and I think seeing her like that, I hope that I will not have the same illness as her. Lely would sometimes yearn to speak with a mother she once knew, and once knew her so well, although she knows it would never happen. Now she hopes her small steps can spark big changes in Indonesia's awareness of Alzheimer's. Indonesian officials have pledged to boost their campaign to raise awareness about Alzheimer's in the country. The health ministry, for instance, is working on a dementia national plan as part of efforts to educate more people about the disease. You can learn more about this and all the stories on today's program on our website, www.assignment-asia.com. That's all the time we have for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Silkina Aluwalia. Join us again on Assignment Asia.